on this episode of Mike's Tool Reviews. Something different. Uh, as I've mentioned, I'm an electrician. <clears throat> and I just thought it would be cool to just go through my, my main uh, electrical tool bag and show you what I have and what I use on a daily basis. Uh, I'm going to start on the outside here. Level. Good magnets. Got to have those neodymium joints in the bottom. And... This one I liked because it offers a 45, you can see that 45 degree uh, bubble and a 30 degree, which are two uh, common angles that electricians go for on pipe bending. And it even gives you the multiplier. 45 is times 1.41 and 30 degrees is times two. Um, if you're not an electrician, that's not gonna make sense, but this Savage, I think it is, yeah, Savage from Lowe's, a good uh, so far it's kind of new but I like that I like that level <clears throat> here this little pocket to keep my knives uh, this is for you know razor knife I don't love this knife it's kind of annoying the, uh, the button that releases the blade you hit that by accident a lot um, I've never really found a razor knife I, I really really liked but this one's all right for now and this is your Walmart uh, Shitty Kershaw, not one of the good ones, one of the Walmart specials. But uh, I keep this thing sharp, and it gets a lot of use at work opening boxes. And I don't know. I sometimes I'll have both of these in my pocket, and depending on the situation, I'll, I'll grab one or the other. Uh, number books for labeling wires. Always good to have these. I don't use them a lot, but it's that's how big it is. So I might as well just stick it in my bag. Got two of those uh, zip ties. <clears throat> this pocket 100% of the time has zip ties in it. Um, got my electrical tape up here. Got this little system with the bungee cord that I added. Uh, that works all right. I can fit you know all my phasing colors up there if I have to take off without having to dig through the bag. Uh, this speed square, I think it's called. Uh, this comes in handy just for laying out troughs, laying out conduit. Uh, laying out connectors into in, into conduit bodies and troughs <clears throat> and just custom we do custom fabricating of uh, of troughs and stuff like that um, this got some extra gloves ugly's book I really think everybody everybody in the electrical trade should have this nobody knows all the stuff in this book and it's got a lot of stuff in here that's not in the code book it's got quick code reference but it also has uh, first aid and transformer calculations, motor calculations, just easy, uh, easy to get to. And that code book, I don't know if you've ever seen an electrical code book, but it's, it looks like a, a damn phone book. Not, not, you don't want to carry that around all the time, but this is just a quick reference. Um, as the suppliers of the lighting, we have to bring our own. You know, you got to shut down a 480 volt panel to add a lighting feed. Chances are, that panel is lighting the room that you're in. So you always got to be prepared with, uh, with all of these little LED headlamps. Uh, that's it for that pocket. I try to keep this pocket low impact because of that ugly's book in there. I don't want to screw that up. Well, on this side, I have the big beater. This is a Harbor Freight screwdriver. Any kind of prying, beating, that really takes the abuse. A file for uh, any time you cut metal. It's probably going to be around uh, electrical conductors, and you don't want that that little edge on there having taken the taking the chance of that cutting into the wire ever. So deburr everything. Um, this just has all kinds of uses. It, it made it in my tool bag by accident, and now I will never not have a long, skinny flathead in there. Uh, this guy's been with me from day one. It's got the this is a long. Robertson tip, square tip, screwdriver, great for uh, landing wires on breakers, has a really, really positive connection to the screw, so you know you got a, you know, a good amount of torque on that. I've had this from, from day one. I think this is one of the first electrical tools I ever bought. Um, always need two pairs of channel locks. Uh, anytime you're doing anything compression fitting, seal tights, uh, compression EMT connectors, couplings, you need two pairs of channel locks. Over here, I get some I get some looks from other electricians for these. 
I don't really see too many too many guys carrying these uh, vice grips around. These are both husky, kind of shitty, but uh, if you need a good set of vice grips, these are these are not the ones. But these usually get the job done while I'm at work. And I think the the set of three was like fifteen bucks. Um, in here, got drill bit hole making central. Got all these hole size and all your popular. Uh, Conduit trade sizes. Um, got those style. Got these. I just picked these up. I've seen these before, but never could, you know, spend the. I think this is like 35 bucks, but this is a tungsten carbide tipped three quarter inch hole saw. This thing's awesome. Uh, I specifically bought this to do a lot of stainless work on the job I'm currently working on and you, know, you can drill maybe 50 stainless holes with this before it goes bad but if you're just doing steel in, in troughs or panels I don't see why this wouldn't last you years just uh, don't let anybody know you have this because they're going to want to borrow it and it's got this little spring here so when it does cut the slug that spring pops it right off. You're not, you're not digging slugs out of this all the time. Like if you if you put one of these as stainless, you might as well throw it in the trash. You might get one hole out of it. It's gonna discolor the metal. There's gonna be smoke. You know what? That this is this is some abortion that I had to put together to make it make something work one day. That's like a two inch coupling screw, I think. Um, that's it for the outside there. Mm, good part here. This is my Fluke testers. I'm not gonna open that, but this is the testers. I have two pairs of them. This is the 337. It does inrush current, uh, AC-DC volts, AC-DC amps, continuity ohms, um, general, yeah. That's why these stay at home. No probes. They're on continuity. Oh. Yeah, these are, these need to go, these need to go in for service. Yeah, I think these are like two, two hundred fifty, two hundred eighty dollars. But I wouldn't trust uh, something. You know, I don't trust cheap testers when you're dealing with deadly voltage. That's what's in this bag. This is in a fully functional set. Uh, I've got my. Here, I'll go over this first. That's my daily screw turner. Um, I like the Klein ten in one also, but I, this one, this one actually, the Milwaukee comes with this unique bit here. This is like a combination of Robertson and Flathead, which you see on a lot of um, EMT couplings and connectors. Uh, you see it everywhere. And this this really, if you, if you don't, if you can't get good leverage on, on a screw, you're on a ladder in an awkward position, you can get it with this, this uh, special Milwaukee bit here. But I will say, uh, it's maybe the third one I've had and these little Flathead pieces will break off. It's not uh, that durable. Oh, it also does, uh, you got 5 sixteenths, and you got Phillips and Flathead over here, quarter inch, 3 eighths, so it covers three nut driver sizes too. Um, again, not a, lot, not a lot of electricians like to carry one of these all the day. They like standalone screwdrivers, but I'm fine with it. Like I said, that's six, six or eight tools that I use frequently in one tool. Even if I gotta buy one of these every six months, I'd rather just carry this around than a bunch of other shit. And then I do have nut drivers. These came in a full set, but I found that these are the three main ones that I use. This is a uh, three ace, three ace, yeah, three ace and half inch. I don't really ever have a need for a bigger or smaller size than these three. Uh, so my good old conduit reamer does half inch, three quarter, and uh, one inch. You just put the pipe on there and it also has like a that's kind of chattered up now it doesn't really work but that's good for tightening the set screws down but uh, yeah the, the handle broke on this thing like day one that I bought after I bought this and I jammed a piece of uh, three-quarter inch pipe over the remaining handle and that thing has been rock solid ever since and I actually prefer this over the uh, the regular grip you can uh, I like a bigger grip on it next to that is my control screwdriver which did not start life as a control screwdriver. I made it one with a grinder. Some extra screwdriver I had, I had a grinder. I needed to, to turn a tiny flathead and 
I made my own. Uh, my three, these are the three tools that I will always buy Klein. The yellow handled pliers, which have the crimping bit in there, which I think works better than any crimping tool you can buy. All sizes, it doesn't just do the yellow size or the blue size. Uh, red, yellow, blue, that thing, that thing kicks ass. These, I'll never go back to the regular uh, diagonal cutters or the dikes. I, I, gotta, I gotta get the high leverage ones. Because you can get your hand way down here, you can get your pinky on that little kick, and you can, uh, you know, you can cut the hell out of some, some thick wire. You probably shouldn't be cutting with these, but they come in handy. Don't cut s nails or staples with them. That will ruin, that will ruin your blades. Um, and these are the strippers I've been using for years. These are the blue handle with the white, uh, the second layer of white uh, grip on there. <clears throat> they actually, they usually fail right here. This used to be a screw. It was a torque screw and a nut on the other side. This is the first pair I've had that it was actually riveted. So I'd be interested to see how these, uh, how these work out. Uh, I'm one of them guys, I get rid of the spring and I get rid of the little the lock that holds it closed. I don't have, have time for that thing. Um, here, you will, if you saw the video on these, you'll recognize these. I do have a standalone Phillips and Flathead for, these are the Tectons. I really like these, these were eight bucks for the pair. Uh, and I've been beating the shit out of this Flathead since I had it. This is just pretty much for setting lock nuts on uh, connectors, electrical connectors. And uh, the tip is held up really well. I, I'm, I've been pretty impressed with those. Um, this, I, I use this power tool more than anything. This is the M12 fuel quarter inch drive uh, impact. This kicks ass. This is uh, any any new guys that come into the trade. I tell them get one of these first, whether it's a Walt or Milwaukee, but get yourself a little impact because you're going to use that more than anything doing commercial work. Uh, Mounting 1900 boxes, wire supports, you get the most use. You get more use out of this than I do a drill most days. Um, more Milwaukee. I don't know. Uh, this is all right. Whole saw. Shiny. Mm -hmm. But uh, I like this one because it's got a soft rubber butt on it and it's pretty level. So when you're, when you're beating it into the wall, it's not some hard. The Stanley ones are all hard plastic there. This is just, uh, I don't love this, but I, I, I do like the Milwaukee one. Um, yeah, more gloves. Never know when you're going to need to have your hands protected. This, I think everybody's got some variation of this. Just random shit. Dap cons, drill bits, washers, redheads, and you know, it just it's the collect all of all of the little bullshit. Um, I tapped mine out. For ground screws, so I always got like a little emergency supply of ground screws on there. Uh, these are good to have doing commercial electrical work, cutting studs, cutting uh, parts of ceiling grid. These, I need a new pair of these. The little latch broke off, so every time I gotta zip tie them back together. Uh, you gotta always gotta have, you gotta carry some material in here. You never know when you're gonna need one of these, just one. If I need one, I'll go get it, but if I I'm far away from them. I always have one in my bag. Same thing with like toggle bolts. There's all kinds of random shit in the bottom here. Uh, this pretty much every electrician should or does have these. This Allen, this Klein Allen key set fits just about every breaker or uh, main lug panel. Big enough you can get some leverage on it. But I do have a socket set that I use most of the time. But you always got to have those in the bag. Um, Here's these, I've had these in another Harbor Freight video. These are the tapping drill bits. These are awesome. Drills the hole and taps it to those, to those sizes. They're all the sizes I use every day. And it comes with these shitty Phillips and flatheads. I don't even care about that. The, this is, uh, that's where it's at right there. And I did, like I said in another video, it's the copy of this set. And this is twice as expensive, but it's not twice as good. If you bought the Greenleaf set and broken them and need a new one, Harbor Freight Drill Master, it's uh, it's definitely a good value there. Another Harbor Freight item is this um, security bit set. 
and it not just it doesn't just come in handy for security bits. It's I mean these are Torx and these are Allens. Whether you have the pin in the middle or not, it's a, a compact little set that uh, it, it can cover. It just covers a lot of ground for how how small it is. Um, Milwaukee tape measure. It's pretty good. I get about a year out of one of those. Um, good old Volcons. You know when this thing's buzzing in your hand, it's that's live. This generally doesn't give you false readings, and you can feel it. It's got a linear motor in it that uh, is actuated f uh, from the voltage, so the little dial jumps down to whatever voltage you're at. It doesn't cover everything, but um, if this thing's buzzing in your hand, you know that shit is live, and be careful. If it doesn't buzz, you're probably okay, unless they just broke. And in that case, you're going to get lit up. <clears throat> This is cool. I don't have a blade in it, but this is just a hand. Uh, you could put a, uh, any Sawzall blade in there. Cool little, I think our Irwin and Cobalt, they make versions of this too. This is always good to have. If you need to get really close to something with a Sawzall, but you can't get the whole whole tool in there, this comes in handy. Or if you uh, need a drywall saw, put a wood blade in there. I know some people that just, just have this, and they don't have a drywall saw. Um, this, the Milwaukee product I don't love. You drop this thing, it's a non-contact voltage tester, which you can see it's just kind of going wonky right now. Um, you drop this three times and throw it away. It, it cannot, uh, it can't stand to fall. My, my, the one I really like, which I can't find right now, is my Fluke uh, non-contact voltage tester. That one has been the best one I've ever had. Uh, ground bar, you never know when you're going to need a ground bar. Like I said, some emergency supplies, some connectors, I got some razor blades, some bits, and this, uh, here we go, what's in here? A bunch of Milwaukee markers. I do prefer those over Sharpies. Um, center punch, pencil pen, this is my insulated uh, 516 bit for bolt-in breakers when that's necessary, or it's just extended. For you know, when you gotta sit one back in a box, and it, a little stubby one wouldn't let your uh, your power tool get in the box, it's good to have a little. It's always good to have a little extra length. Nobody's gonna argue with that. That's about it. Oh yeah, and you gotta have these plug testers, GFI plug testers. But uh, this is uh, this bag. I love this bag. This is called. This is a Husky. Uh, I believe it's. They call it the 18 inch big mouth bag with tool divider. That's where you see in the middle there, you got pockets over here, pockets over here, and then you got this rigid plastic or whatever the hell it is, this rigid liner in the middle, and you can put all your tools on either side of that. But, uh, and I'll show you this too. This is just my Husky uh, basic socket set. This doesn't cover everything, but this usually gets the job done. And I've got the, oh, I'll show you this one, i got the, the bits for, uh, you can't buy a damn just socket set. They always come with some shitty screwdriver to bump up the, uh, the piece count, you know. Oh, it's a 55 piece, but like 20 of them are these fucking stupid bits. Yeah, these are good. Throw that in my little impact if I got a lot of bolting and unbolting to do. Um, I have a bigger portable set, but... That's, that doesn't take up much room. It's not really that heavy, so I don't mind dragging this into a, into a job. The Husky socket sets have been pretty good. I, I almost like uh, the Husky stuff better than than like Craftsman, which is most of my other most of my other tools. Um, that's about it. And these these are extra pliers. These are the channel lock linesman pliers. These are the closest I've found the clines without being expensive. Or, or the closest period. Um, they're not that great. The little rivet in the middle is kind of, you can't see it, but it's pretty tiny. These aren't going to hold up as good as Klein's, but if they're only 20 bucks, I think they might only be $16, $17 instead of $40. So if you're in a pinch, you can't afford the Klein's, I, I recommend these, these uh, channel lock pliers. But uh, that's about it. That's my tool bag. That's the 40 fucking pounds of tools I drag into work just about every day. And uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed it. If you're an electrician and 
you know, you got anything to say about my tools, let me know in the comments. If you can you see where I can streamline this some more or uh I you know, give me some suggestions. I'm uh, more than willing to hear them. So uh thanks for watching. <coughs>